Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my Stagey YouTube channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I'm an independent theatre critic and a content creator based here in the UK, and this is my Stagey YouTube channel, where I review shows that I've been invited to go and see, and I talk about news and rumours and wild speculation happening in the theatre world worldwide. And today, theatre news is dominated by a very exciting Broadway opening. The summer has officially ended and we are back into the beginning of an exciting season of Broadway openings and announcements. And rumours have been spiralling about this particular show for a while. The writing has been very much on the wall. I am talking about a big Broadway Broadway revival of Sweeney Todd starring Josh Groban and Annalee Ashford. Now in the year after the death of legendary Broadway composer and genius Stephen Sondheim, it is not surprising that we are seeing a lot of Sondheim revivals. Sweeney Todd is arguably one of his best known and most commercial works. It originally premiered as a lavish production in the 80s, starring Len Carreau and Angela Lansbury as Sweeney Todd and the nefarious Mrs. Lovett. It hasn't been seen on Broadway since its 2005 revival in a comparatively more minimal act-musician staging by director John Doyle, which starred Patti Lapone and Michael Cerverus. Now, there have been other outings for the show since, both in the US and in the UK. We had a big revival at Chichester Festival Theatre over here that then transferred to the Adelphi Theatre in London with Michael Ball and Imelda Storm. Thornton. The US had a concert version of the show with Bryn Terfel and Emma Thompson that transferred over here. And there was also a site-specific off West End and subsequently off-Broadway production that was staged in an actual pie shop. Again, very pared back. Now the through line through all of these stagings, as well as other concert productions, is that we haven't seen a full, lavish, fully staged production of the show in very many years but that is possibly all about to change. So we're gonna talk through this very exciting announcement of Sweeney Todd's Broadway return. We're gonna talk about the casting and the creative team, my thoughts about these and the implications of what little information we already know. So first of all, let's just talk about the general implications of reviving this show. Now it is set to open in March, 2023 just in time to make it onto Broadway before the April cutoff for next year's Tony Awards, meaning it will be eligible for the 2023 Tony Awards, and I'm assuming it will be eyeing that Best Revival prize, as well as potentially awards for its actors and creatives. This also means that for the first time ever, Sondheim's Into the Woods and Sweeney Todd will presumably both be eligible within the same season, because I am led to believe that Into the Woods has been submitted uh, for contention for the Tony Awards, even though Encore's previous Broadway transfer of Sunday in the Park with George was withdrawn from eligibility, mostly because they didn't want to give away that many tickets in their limited run to the number of Tony voters who would have to have been invited to come and see the show. As a fun side note, Sunday in the Park with George, which was meant to transfer to the West End but never did, thank you COVID, also starred Annalie Ashford, and the buzz at the time was that she was giving an incredible performance and very likely would have been nominated for and possibly even won the Tony for her role as Dot. So Sweeney Todd would represent not only Annalie's second big Sondheim role on Broadway as Mrs. Lovett, but also another opportunity for her to potentially earn a Tony Award nomination and maybe even her second win. She has won previously for Best Featured Actress in a Play, but never for a musical, even though she's such a well-known musical theatre performer. Now, like I said before, in the wake of Sondheim's passing, it does does not surprise me that producers are all rushing over each other to try and produce Sondheim shows. This is something that is going to have a greater audience draw than usual because for most of his life, Sondheim shows have been hugely critically praised and award-winning, but have never represented an enormous box office draw. They have never been the most commercially obvious things. And I think the outpouring of love we're now seeing for him uh, sadly makes them a lot more commercially viable than they previously were, which is kind of messed up. But if it means we get to see more Sondheim shows on Broadway and honor his legacy and platform his amazing compositions, then I am also not mad about that. And Sweeney is almost definitely the most commercial. Into the Woods has also been adapted for a major motion picture like Sweeney Todd was by Tim Burton, obviously starring Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. But Sweeney Todd is probably also the most well-known in popular culture. 
Like you see it in Halloween costumes, it gets referenced in other things, it is definitely more well known as a concept than a lot of Sondheim's other musicals. And like I had said before, the US specifically have been starved of a major revival of Sweeney Todd. We do not yet know what the vibe of this production is going to be. We can get kind of a sense by the casting and the creatives and even some of the artwork that has already been released, but we do not know to what extent this is going to necessarily compare with the original production or be a completely new take on the show like Broadway has previously seen. Here in the UK, a lot of our more recent Sweeney Todd revivals have been pitching the show into different, slightly more modernized decades. They are no longer Victorian England. Even the Michael Ball and Imelda Staunton production, though it didn't on the face of it seem that different, had updated the show to a slightly more modern 20th century setting. There was another regional revival that revived the show in the 1970s. Given the economic crises that are currently being experienced worldwide and particularly being felt right now with the cost of living crisis here in the UK and the show's themes about class disparity and, and the lower classes being stepped on by those above them, it wouldn't even be unwelcome to stage the show in a completely modern setting. Sweeney Todd for 2022. Eat the rich in a pie. So now let's talk about the casting. Now we have known for quite a while about the rumors of Josh Groban and Annalee Ashford leading this revival, and they turned out to be true. Further casting has yet to be announced, but you would assume it's gonna be pretty good, and you would assume with the two white leads already announced, it is probably also going to be plentifully diverse. We can hope. I'm just gonna pitch Renee Elise Goldsbury for Beggar Woman right now and just see what happens. Or Heather Headley. Oh, is she available? Oh. Josh Groban as Sweeney Todd makes a certain amount of sense to me. This role has definitely in recent years been cast with sort of the vocals at the forefront of the performance. And Josh Groban is principally a phenomenal vocalist. He is somewhere between a baritone and a tenor and Sweeney Todd is probably somewhere between a baritone and a bass, but I have no doubt that he can make it work. What's interesting to me is Josh Groban is such a romantic lead type. He is so the Anatoly in chess. And yes, he got to sort of indulge slightly more on the darker side with his more recent performance in Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 as Pierre, but that is still not quite full Sweeney. His general manner and demeanor and presence is so light and charming and funny that this is not an obvious role to pitch him for, but I'm very excited to see what they do with this. I think there's something to be said for a discernibly romantic and harmless man who has been turned to grief and darkness by the circumstances of his past, rather than the one who just looks terrifying to begin with and has always seemed ghoulish even in flashback. Looking at you, Depp. Looking at you. It's cute to me that Josh Groban and Sarah Bareilles hosted the Tony Awards together a few years ago and both had a little bit about how they've never won any major awards, and the two of them may now be eyeing Tony Awards for leading performances in musicals in the same season. But will Bareilles be beaten out to this by Annalee Ashford? So we've already talked a little bit about Annalee. She will be playing Mrs. Lovett. This is casting I can absolutely get behind. It is very different from previous Mrs. Lovett's. We have never seen a Glinda type play this role. If we were casting a more traditional version of the show, then Annalee Ashford would probably be stuck in a Joanna pigeonhole and wouldn't be considered for Mrs. Lovett. However, she is bonkers and hilarious and a fantastic actress. So I'm really very intrigued to see what she does with this. Between the two of them, it feels like a young, hot Sweeney Todd. I mean, Annalee is 20 years younger than Angela Lansbury was when she first played this role on Broadway. So we can get a certain sense of the vibe that they're going for just through this principal casting alone. Now let's talk about the creative team. So directing is Tony Award winning director of Hamilton and Kennedy Center honoree Thomas Kale. He is the man of the moment. He has been very busy since the success of Hamilton. And this is kind of going to be his first really big musical directing role on Broadway since Hamilton's success. On the musical side of things, he is once again joined by another Hamilton alumnus, Alex Lacamoire, who will be serving as music supervisor. And he'll be supervising legendary Sondheim orchestrator Jonathan Tunick's original orchestrations with a 26-piece orchestra. This alone is a huge, huge novelty for Broadway. This is going to sound huge and fantastic, and this can give us some indication of the scale of this production. This means, at the very least, it is going to be a much fuller, much bigger sound than New York's two more recent Sweeney Todd revivals that it has seen. This is a hearkening back to the scale of the original, at least from a musical sense. 
However, should we be concerned that we are going to see another big Sondheim Broadway transfer where the orchestra is on the stage, as with Sunday in the Park, as with the current Into the Woods? Possibly not, because we have also a very exciting set designer. Mimi Lean, who is not only a Tony Award-winning set designer for her work on Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, she will be reunited here, obviously, with lead actor from that production, Josh Groban, but she is also a MacArthur Genius Grant, as was Lin-Manuel Miranda. Like, they don't just throw these around to any old randomers. This is a huge, huge deal. So you can assume something very exciting is going to be in the works for the staging of this production. Possibly even immersive, dare I say it. I cannot wait until we start to get a sense of the visuals of what we are going to be seeing here. Rounding off the creative team, we have Stephen Hoggett as choreographer. Now, you would not associate Sweeney Todd as a musical with traditional choreography, which is why we do not have a traditional choreographer. Stephen Hoggett has had many awards for his work as a movement director. I'm talking about such shows as American Idiot, as Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, as Curious Instant of the Dog in the Nighttime, also Once, Peter and the Starcatcher, The Glass Menagerie on Broadway, The Light Princess over here at the National Theatre, the fight choreography from Rocky the Musical, choreography for The Last Ship, Sting's Musical on Broadway, and most recently the amazing production of The Ocean at the End of the Lane that I saw earlier this year. All of these names are very, very exciting, but we can't necessarily piece together an exact idea of their vision for the show because they all have very different creative histories. So it'll be very interesting to see how these artists come together and reinterpret this very well-known musical. We can get a little sense of the vibe they're going for from the marketing materials that have already been published. We literally have one reel that has been posted to the show's brand new Instagram account. It is underscored by the iconic orchestral sweep from the Ballad of Sweeney Todd. It has the original font from the first production of the show, and the whole aesthetic of it is very classic. It is not at all modern looking. There is something very sort of vintage almost about um, kind of the lighting and the coloring and the fonts that they have chosen here. And I do like what they've done with this logo where it is in blood red and the streaks of blood above it represent the London skyline. This would suggest we are still going to be London based, which means Annalee Ashford will once again be whacking out her beloved English accent. <laughs> or we're doing something a little bolder in our reinterpretation and this is just to deceive us. I don't know, I think this is early days and anything could happen. We could have Sweeney Todd set in an asylum where it's not really London based at all. It could be semi-modernized, it could be completely modernized, it could be abstract, it could be minimal and artsy. God, I hope it's not, but we will find out. I think we know that there's going to be some sort of a very exciting set design. We know there is going to be some bold and very original take on the direction. We know there is going to be a huge full orchestral sound. Beyond that, we know very little whatsoever, but we will be eagerly waiting for next March when this production opens on Broadway. Can I make it to Broadway by next March? I am very curious. If anyone fancies inviting me to come and stay in their New York homes so I can come over and see this production, I would be incredibly grateful for that. Maybe this is the time I finally make my first trip to New York to a Broadway show. Maybe. But that is everything we know so far about Sweeney Todd making its Broadway return. If this show is successful enough, perhaps it will then even come over to the West End. You know, it's not so recent that we had Sweeney Todd in London. There is certainly an enormous quantity of Sondheim fans over this side of the Atlantic. And I think the need for Sondheim shows and the desire for that amongst audiences is felt just as acutely here in the wake of his passing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more content just like this. And if you really enjoyed and want to support me and thank me as a Stagey content creator, you can give me a super thanks down below. That would be very much appreciated. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre where you can gain access to some exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a Stagey day. For 10 more seconds. I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>